Good morning, everybody. Hi there. It's Victoria Laurent Fabish, holistic psychotherapist, registered psychotherapist. I'm here with one of my dearest and most favorite people on the planet, Lisa Betts Lacroix, Superpower You host. Uh, this amazing podcast that I really, really recommend that you can get on so many platforms, iTunes and uh, Stitcher and uh, Lips and uh, all of the all of the podcast platforms. But she's just an inspiring individual and I've known her since high school. And so I just sorry we're late, everybody. Traffic was just a bitch. <laughs> so that's OK. Life happens. And we're here and we're here to talk about courageous conversations. And we're also here to talk about how how the words that we speak to ourselves in challenging situations and how that actually impacts how we feel, how we relate, and how the entire experience goes. I mean, I think we're going through some, I think a lot of people are going through some very, very challenging times, I would say. Are, are, Absolutely. Can you relate? <laughs> I can relate. I can relate. There's a lot going on yeah. in, in life, and, you know, that's just the way that life is also, right? Yeah. We... we if we're alive and we're humans and we're interacting with other people and challenges yeah. and we have goals and we have um, ideals and thoughts and opinions, we're going to come up against shit. And, That's, uh, and you know, I, 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 I myself, I'm going through some, some, some heavy duty stuff with friends and stuff. It happens, you know, relationships. Yeah. If you want to have sincere relationships, these are the things that, that happen. And so um, I pulled a card on my lovely tarot deck. Give me some universe. Give me some guidance universe. And you know what I pulled? What did you Joan pull? of Arc. And you know Ooh. what? Joan of Arc is, is, in my opinion, like a superpower of, yeah, of her time. And, she's, and the card meaning is, you know, speak your truth. Speak Sometimes truth. you need to breathe a little fire in order to get Even what you need. Even if everyone else thinks you're crazy. Even everyone else yeah. thinks you're crazy. Just like, <laughs> speak your truth. And it's yeah. not easy, but I recommend it because it's... The Keep one thing going. I want to say about that is the interesting thing about truth, and I think yes. the really big challenge is that we have habitual patterns of thought, and so right. what seems like our truth can sometimes be our habitual, our habitual patterns. So, Very good at observation. You know, I think yeah. sometimes we have to, I know that for myself, I notice I have a challenging situation, or I have something that's not working, working well, or I'm trying to do something that's hard, and the, the habitual thoughts that come in uh, can be the ones that aren't necessarily serving me. And so I think that's right. when we have to Habitual say... Habitual thoughts disguised as truth. Yes, exactly. Isn't that interesting? Exactly. Yeah. So that And that's powerful because um, I believe in courageous conversations and courageous relationships. One of the things that I hold as true and dear to my heart, mm -hmm. and I know you do as well, is this notion of challenging the thing that is most uh, rote in my mind. Mm -hmm. You know, you know, so to, to, to just move past, um, move past that thing that I always think. And one of the things that I always think comes from my family of origin, which is, oh, I don't know if I can trust people. Oh, right. I don't know if I can trust people. Right. And that, that I challenge all the time because it's not, it's not something that serves me ultimately, right. ultimately. But of course you got to check to see who you're putting your trust on, right? You've got to, you've got to make sure that the territory is, 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 is kind of clear, you know? Yeah. Um, so that's important, but courageous conversations are really, really, uh, difficult, Ta challenging, they're yeah. challenging, they're challenging. challenging. Exactly. You can see, I don't, I, I mean, this is maybe your field more than mine, but I noticed, and maybe you have some insight for me yeah. is I noticed myself that, um, and I think there's something to do with the reptilian brain. I notice myself that when I have a thought that's not serving me in a situation that's already challenging, my body reacts in ways that are the signal to me that, uh, I have to look at my thoughts. I have to look at my thoughts. Right How does now. your body, what does your body say to you? Or what do you notice yeah. in your physical body? Well, if for it's you. really bad, I can almost feel like puking. Right. <laughs> <laughs> you know, yeah. like sometimes I just can feel anxious. And, <coughs> yeah, an anxiety uh, inside. An anxiety yeah. Inside inside yeah. To say, okay, well, and usually the, if I have a feeling like that, there's a thought behind that, right? And that's what, when we talked, yeah. when you were guests on my show, yeah. um, we talked about uh, um, the fact that what we're thinking and what we're saying to our partners or in, in a conversation has an impact. Um, Absolutely. How you say it how you say and also it. the person listening. You know, one yeah. of the things that is the tenant of courageous conversation is be very, very clear that um, how you, what your tone is, what your facial expression is, you know, some of the words that you may be um, saying. If you're going to have a courageous conversation, be very responsible for what you're projecting out. It can't yeah. just be, 
explosion and vomiting on the other person. Or, that's... or, or acting out of or, or acting out of that immediate thought that's your natural habitual right. thought. Have some editing that yeah. needs to happen. Have some, um, you know, thank you for people who are joining yeah, us. Yeah, and Santu, um, yeah. Uh, it's what, uh, you're asking what the topic of the conversation is, and it's, it's fairly general. You said yeah. it's a courageous conversation, and we're talking about how thoughts matter. But if there's something specific or a specific question you have or a particular mm -hmm. detail around that topic, please uh, share it with share us. Share with us, absolutely. Because this is, we're, we're basically tackling a big kind of topic, umbrella topic, which is how to deal with, uh, or, or how, to, how to enter into and deal with courageous conversations with people in your life that matter. And for me, courageous conversations are the ultimate of spiritual warrior um, work. Because it's really, really challenging to remain authentic when you're afraid. Right. You know, when you're afraid and authentic and constructive. That's the other thing. Authentic and constructive. You can be just totally authentic, but not constructive. So yeah. I feel that skillful, constructive, yet authentic is the task at hand in, construct in courageous conversations. Absolutely. And courageous experiences. I mean, yeah. you know, you're you, you're exploring intermittent fast, intermittent fasting, which yeah. I find just a <laughs> super triggering. <laughs> B really interesting. Yeah. Given given yeah. the framework that you've put it in. Yeah. Well, the piece that I think relates to what we're talking about around thoughts yeah. related to intermittent fasting. It doesn't have to be intermittent fasting. It could be anything. I mean, another thing that I did recently is I I took a break from drinking alcohol. You know, I think I. And I'm doing that in a gentle way, not the not this way. That's the key. You know, gentle. I'm doing it not this the way where this is a bad thing, and I'm gonna be good over here. And I and I and, and deferring any labels, but just saying, here's the choice that I want to make for myself. So I've started with that, and now I'm looking at intermittent fasting as um, a challenge for a bunch of reasons. I could talk about. I don't need to, but that's considered to have very good long term health impacts yeah. and uh, really really good protection against some age related just disease right. uh, and aging, um, natural aging processes. But the part that relates to what we're talking about is that when you try to do something that's difficult or unfamiliar, mm -hmm. old thoughts can come up. And so, for example, for myself, Ooh, yeah. in the intermittent fasting, I noticed the old thoughts coming up like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. Or... Um, oh my gosh, I can't do this. Yeah. Oh my, you know, oh my gosh, there's no way. I'm not capable of this. This is beyond my ability to yeah. handle the discomfort. And I think that's the other piece is, is the idea that that um, that discomfort is something that automatically I want to avoid. Okay, so that's you know? a huge one yeah. because I think in all courageous conversations, in all yeah, in all uh, courageous acts, yeah. you gotta s really surrender to the fact that there's discomfort. Yeah. and we're just not. We're just not. I think we're not. We are biologically wired to go away from discomfort yeah. and to be defensive of that discomfort. But I think that it's incredibly gr go ahead tell uh, me what you think maybe of that. i don't know if it's bi if it's biologically maybe it is maybe it's a warning and i, I i'm just thinking out loud i'm not yeah. sure or maybe we live in a culture right now that has been is so comfortable and so privileged protected. for many of us and yeah. protected yeah. and uh, abundant that we actually have forgotten what discomfort feels like and i yeah i'm not I think, sure i think you're right there is a biology within us mm -hmm. there actually is a biology within us that we are biologically we, pro we are actually predisposed to go aw away from discomfort right. and to defend. Uh, we, we are biologically predisposed to be defensive, interestingly right. enough. Right. However, um, we don't live in caves anymore. Right. And we don't live uh, running away from saber-toothed tigers. We are living in a rather protective environment. And so we can cultivate the muscle of discomfort. And I feel that that is the... In my opinion, the cornerstone to all amazing yeah. life yeah. is to yeah. to confront and find ways to get okay with some level of discomfort. Whether that discomfort, in, what do you think? I mean, wh whether Absolutely. that discomfort means some discipline, you know, uh, not just being at the whim of your of your of your thought of your need, yeah. you know, and you and, don't really want to go to the gym. You'd really rather sit and watch Netflix. Yeah, and there's discomfort in. Jennifer's got that, Jen. Hey. There's discomfort in having to, you know, in, 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 in achieving the goal that you're after, if it means going through something that's less comfortable than what, you know, than not achieving the goal. So, yeah. And our brain is kind of, uh, oh, Julia says, uh, social, socially wired to avoid 
and even to bury discomfort For, with medicating. Yeah, yeah, with medicating. And yeah, exactly. Not only in some cases. I mean, I think it's a very, very, very common thing that we do in our culture is yeah. that we numb ourselves out from the discomfort because we have not been. Uh, we've not cultivated the ability to see the discomfort, to notice it. And this is where it comes back to the thoughts, yeah. to have a different thought relationship, a different, to think differently about it. Right? To, and to challenge yourself to go, how, literally ask the opening question for your brain, which is, how can I see this differently? Sitting with it. Yeah, just, just yeah. And, Je, and Jed says, sitting with it. Exactly. Sitting with that. You know, how can I see this differently? And in, in worthwhile relationships, let me just say, it does require that you decide it's okay to be uncomfortable because what I see is people numbing out to the level where they never know what they're actually feeling and so they never draw a boundary right. and they never say no and they never actually do what they want to do and then they live in resentment, you know, and so it's these are courageous, courageous acts to say no, to feel your discomfort. To move forward. I think that's what we're talking about. It is absolutely. You know? That's the essence of it. It is. It's the essence of it. That is the essence yeah. of it. And I also feel like, um, let me ask you what, you know, you've done mm -hmm. some major challenging of your own self and, and had courageous. I just see you as quite, like when I observe you, I see you as very courageous. You do a lot of really co courageous things and you're and you and you don't discourage and you're very hopeful in many ways and you know life is I mean I've known you for a lot of years and so I know that <laughs> I know that that's you know not the whole, you know the whole I know thing. the whole story but <laughs> it's okay and my point is it's like I always find you doing some things that are about challenging yourself oh yeah that is what I find to be really 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 cool uh, I just want to decline this phone call because it's gonna mess up our sound so let's keep going okay. um, so what happens within you that you say I need to do something that's uncomfortable what what what's the process in you do you think mm, that's interesting i like to do new things i think actually it comes from my my adhd brain i think i just oh okay like new, that, I, think, I didn't know you were going to say that yeah, but that's so cool i think okay. i just like new things and i like new experiences and i crave new experiences and it's my natural inclination to um, be sort of uncomfortable or to well, be no, sort of no the, the discomfort is the, si is the side the side effect or the effect. Oh, okay. I don't think it's my intention to be uncomfortable or to be challenged even. It's just that I see something that I want to do and something that's new and shiny and I go towards it and I'm like, okay, I want to explore that. I okay. want to get into that. Oh my gosh, this is amazing. I love it. I want, and then I would, and then I set a goal. Or so is the I discomfort around sticking to it? This discomfort is the hard part. It's the, it's, it's sticking, the, and, part. The sticking it's the and the sticking. And I have not always been good at it. And Lynn, Lynn Ann says getting to the other side of, Fear is freedom. I mean, so true. Oh, My true. God. But it's walking through it. That's the thing, right? It's yeah. walking through the fear and not letting the gremlins and the thoughts say, don't do it, don't do it, stay safe, stay safe, be comfortable, be comfortable. That's the challenge. That is the challenge. Um, when I, when I uh, opened up my practice all these years ago, I remember thinking, who the hell am I? <laughs> to, mm. to just do this, you know, those were the, the gremlins okay. going inside me. And I remember when I produced, when I wrote and produced plays, anytime that I've done anything, I definitely have to confront the family of origin messaging of like, really, what, why are you doing that? Why just stay safe? It's okay. Yeah. Just stay safe. And so it's a prop for me. The mental process is to, you know, maybe for you, it's the ADHD brain. For me, it's like an ego process that says, I'm not going to let them tell me what to do. Mm -hmm. I'm not going to let them say to me, determine that I should stay safe. So there's like a, like a little bit of a reb rebel that, that's like, no, I don't think so. I got to do this thing, yeah. you know? And then my, my, I happen to have a, a, an okay ability to stick to things, yeah. to stick to what it is you that do. I set out. Uh, not always, but you know, I mean, a, a lot of the time. So but that the discomfort for me it comes in shaking up my routine. Mm. There's something about shaking up. You know that I about just me. shook it up for you. She just told <laughs> it. She was late. It's okay. <laughs> when we travel together, it's so funny. It's like, what does Lynn say? Uh, I've been taking scuba lessons, terrified of open water alone, oh. but I want to experience it. That's really interesting. That's a good one. It raises for me the qu the query of where how do you define that line between seeing something that's scary and doing it. And seeing something that's scary and saying that's not for me because and scuba lessons brings it up for me because I did Water. scuba I did the first level of scuba and I did it because I wanted to experience what is this like I I don't like to be closed in I don't like to be undragged I'm really claustrophobic I did yeah. it 
and I got my first level certification, and then my husband and my son went on to the next level, and, they, I, and I was and like, said, no, no, I'm, I'm tapping out. I'm, I'm, I'm tapping out. I don't think I'm ever going to do scoop again. Yeah. So, so I think it's it brings up that question of. Um, you yeah, know, just because you're scared and you want to challenge yourself doesn't mean you should jump off a cliff. You know? oh, oh, that's ex- okay. So that's a really important thing, and I really invite people to share their own courageous acts, courageous conversations. If you feel comfortable, it'd be really cool to add it to the discussion. But I would say that yeah, this is not about willy nilly just you know, you know, adrenaline junkie seeking. That's not either what we're talking about okay (laughs) and I think that that's not that healthy I don't think that's healthy I don't think that adrenaline seeking and just courage for courage sake and risk for risk sake is at all what I'm talking about I'm talking about a nuance which is and that's why I wanted you to come in and talk about intermittent fasting because it's it's a completely uh in my opinion courageous thing to you know and I want to say to anybody out there by the way just need to say this as as an important thing listen to me I've worked with eating disorders. It's 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 something I'm familiar with. Anorexia, all of the, you know, restricting. This is not what this is about. You know, intermittent fasting is if there is any kind of an uh, even a sniff of an eating disorder in you or it's not for you. It's it deprivation is not for you. And I actually said to Lisa, eh, I'm feeling a little bit triggered about this. I don't know. I don't know about this." But then of course I love, "Can you just share with us please because I really need to hear." what the biological impact is to do 12 or more hours of fasting periodically. So I'm not an expert in it. No, I'm not but you're discovering. But from my, my own process with it and my, lot of my reading and my listening to other shows and my more reading yeah. and uh, talking to people and ex- being on lists and groups, my understanding is that um, our bodies are not biologically intended to be to be consistently feeding and we live in a culture that has so much food abundance that we have gotten into habitual patterns where we're eating Ah. throughout the day from morning to night even 30 or 40 years ago people had their dinner at six o'clock in our culture people had their dinner at six o'clock and then they stopped eating and then they went to bed and then they got up and they had a good 12 hours Uh we don't even necessarily have 12 hour fast so we're consistently um, giving our body a shot of insulin right. all the time throughout the day. And, and I found that since we started talking about this, that the 12 hours is no problem. 12 hours is I have found the 12 hours, not an issue, no. in fact. So the when it gets fast, into 13 and 14 and 15 hours, that's when I start to go, okay, F okay. this. <laughs> so, so this is the thing where I want to talk about the mind piece, yeah, right? Yeah, that's and the I'm mind, not, exactly. And I'm, not, and I'm not, again, your caveats are really important to recognize. This is, yeah. And this is, not in fact, not, in my opinion, it's about changing the conversation about it being deprivation, right? right? It's an active choice. It's not deprivation. You won't be able to do it very easily if you're thinking, oh, my God, I'm depriving myself. Oh, my God, right. only another hour of depriving myself. Only another hour. It's a different you know, thing. As opposed to think of being, thinking of it as only another hour of giving my cells a chance to regenerate. Yes, and even feeling a bit of hunger as a positive thing for your body to go into autophagy, which is... Autophagy. Autophagy. You, she used that word the other yeah, day. Yeah, so autophagy actually means, literally translated is self-eating. Um, and the idea is that... that like the, eating yourself? Eat, so it's a, eating this, the, the cell... Uh, the way I see it as is regen, eating the cells, burning up the cells oh, okay. that are no longer serving you and that are contributing to things like di- type D- 2 diabetes in our culture. When we right. have... Excess inflammation, fat, inflammation, excess fat inside, and not just, I'm not talking about what we look like or anything like that, like in our... In, in, intra-organ. In, yeah. Um, is that what you're saying, intra-organ? Yeah, yeah. you know, ever throughout our bodies, but also in our bodies when we have fat that's not necessarily, you know, like they talk about where, where it is in the your mid, body. The, mid, the yeah. mineral fat, yes. Yeah. And um, so some people actually fast for weight loss purposes. It's not really my, it's not my purpose. It's not You've what I... have never had really an issue with, with, with being large... Yeah. Since I've known you, but it's, mean, but but you do it more for longevity. It sounds I'm like interested for the longevity, and I mean I do happen to have about ten or fifteen pounds extra beyond my normal. As activity. we all kind of puke. Uh, <laughs> no, no, I mean you know we're all we're all individual, kidding. right? We all, absolutely you your know, body type. I got you. Yeah, got and, it. And it's not a I'm big kidding. deal. And it's not a big deal. And it's not like horrible. And I'm not like suffering like um, personal. You know, dis dis, dis uh, what what's that word? I can't remember that word. Upset but where, yeah, or where you're looking at your body, yes, issues or yeah. anything like that. It's just that it would not hurt me. In fact, in in, in fact, it's considered to be good for long term health to be mm-hmm. 
leaning towards our, our leaner side of our own bodies, right? Right, right. Um, there's a lot of um, negative health things that fat, fat stores can actually contribute to. So that combined with this autophagy piece, and also for me more specifically the insulin. Dysmorphia, that's the word. Oh, dysmorphia, right. yeah. 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 The, the insulin regulation. So ah. I believe that type 2 diabetes in our culture comes from the fact that we are consistently on an insulin roller coaster. And you also have a bit and of... And I have type 2 diabetes in my family, right. and I have at times in my life been pre, pre-diabetic or sort of looking like I'm... And your mom... Diabetic. Your mom and my mom yeah. was type, had type two diabetes. Exactly. So and that's an important thing. Pancreas health is. and pancreatic cancer, I think, can potentially be related. So yeah, she didn't feel any hunger and actually slept amazingly well. Lynn Nance saying, yeah, Lynette, yeah, she that you that you fasted for twenty four hours and only did clear liquids like tea and broth, and then didn't feel hunger and actually slept amazing well. Yeah, I mean, it's the body is resting. The yeah. body gets to take a break from having to process process. The, the truth is that idea that we, that feeling that we have hunger for the most part is um, actually not true hunger. Most of us that live in, in the first world that have, you know, are lucky enough to have regular meals and a roof over our head, most of us actually never really experience actual hunger. We experience these symptoms that we associate to hunger. Oh, my stomach's thoughts. rumbling. I'm really hungry. And it's all thoughts. thoughts. And thoughts. I only know that. I can tell you I had these thoughts too until I started fasting. And the very first time I did my very first 40 hour fast, which is basically stopping eating at one night and skipping one day of food and then eating the next morning. The very first time before I did that, I thought there's no way I could never in a million years do that until I did it. And then I realized that actually it was the idea of eating that I missed more than actually eating. So Janine says the month of Ramadan is upon us now and it feels good to know uh, while we fast, we think of others we don't actually who don't actually have access to daily meals and nutrition. Thanks, yeah. ladies, for this chat. That my pleasure. That's that's an excellent perspective. Again, thoughts and courageous acts nurtured by the thoughts that we think. You know, the courageous act, whether it's leaving a toxic relationship, having a courageous conversation, engaging in behavior that is different or new and 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 hard to do, whatever that thing is that re- requires courage. It requires that you frame it and nurture it with thoughts that are supporting that new behavior. Not, I mean, really pick your thoughts. It can't be, oh my God, I'm depriving myself. Or, oh my God, I'm going to lose everything that matters to me. Or, oh my God, I will die from this. No, stay in the, some really important, I'll, I'll have a couple of ideas. Let me see if you do. Some really, really good thoughts to feed your brain are things like, I have the resiliency to be able to move forward in this action that's causing me fear. Uh, any ideas? Well, one thing that occurs to me when I when I did my show on taking a break from drinking um, a few weeks ago, I decided that I wanted to do the same. And um, one of the one of the things one of the things I said in that show was I could make the choice around fasting or drinking that I'm going to steal myself to be able to do this because it's going to be good for me and I'm going to work at it and it's going to be hard, but I can do it anyway. Um, those are tough thoughts. And those are terrible thoughts. Those are not <laughs> going to work for me. I'm actually not that strong. I don't have that much character, you know? So what were thoughts so that you chose? So for me, it had to be that I needed a why. Oh, this is my power of why one, which is what's the why behind it? Oh, and for the me, why. the why, the why I wanted to, to go through the discomfort for both of these situations is because I want to know, I want to experience the fact that I'm someone who can grow and who can change. And wow. I'm someone who want to, who, who I want to know that I'm someone who can see discomfort and go through it. And I have not always felt that I was that person or been able to do that in my life. And so I wanted to have the experience and the reminder and the knowledge that I'm a person who can go through discomfort. Mm-hmm. So that is something you wanted to cultivate in yourself. That was a much more impactful and useful why for me than mm. I'm going to be good or I'm going to yeah. have character. I'm I am someone, yeah. just to repeat that, I not I'm going to be good, I'm going to have character. Right. I am someone who can recognize, re- choose discomfort, who can, who can choose discomfort as a means to an end so I can, like, uh, was it Lynn said, come out the other side to freedom. So I can come up. So, and that's what you're looking to cultivate in your being. Yes. And I feel that, you know, I have to tell you, Lisa, that is just brilliant because it is the cornerstone of, of spiritual and emotional growth Mm -hmm. is to be able to choose to be okay, or at least to, to cultivate the part of you, the muscle that says, I can go through this discomfort and I can get to the other side and I can get to the other side and I can be free and I can grow and I can, this is an evolving person. 
I'm not just stuck doing the same thing over and over. And as 12 step would say, expecting a different result. That's the, de that's the definition of madness. Yeah. So, um, we're going to start to wrap our thoughts, our, our conversation up. I mean, this conversation could go on and on. And I love it when Lisa comes to town. She lives oh, in San Francisco. Me with you and I, I love, love it when Lisa comes to town. And now that I have an iPhone, oh no, you don't have an iPhone yet, but you have, you have an iPad, don't you? Yes. Or some iOS product. We'll figure it out. Yeah. We'll figure out. We're going to, we're going to do some, some cross continent conversations. <gasps> I did <laughs> CCC co cross continent oh. conversations, courageous cross continent conversations. Oh no. All right. So, uh, Lisa, where can they find you and where can they find your podcast? I said it earlier, uh, but I would let's just... love you to check into my podcast. You can search on superpower. You that's you with the letter U on any podcast platform, or if you want to find it initially online to either listen or read, it's Lisa BL.com. And Lisa yeah. BL, BL the dot com. Dot com. Yes. My podcast connections there. You can read the show notes or you can even click and listen right there online. And join the group Superpower You Tribe, yeah. which I love. And please join my group, which is positive self culture, relationship culture, family culture, which is what gets me up in the morning is knowing that the work that we do actually can impact multi generational, stop the dysfunction and break the patterns and move forward in courageous ways. And of course, come over to my website, visualizationworks.com, where you have tons of articles, free information, lots of inspiring stuff. And I want to say, I really want to thank you for coming thank across you. town. I know it was so busy and I love you so much. You are my, <laughs> one of my soul sisters. And, uh, I will, Please share this video, everybody, because it's a good one and people can really, really use this information on Courageous Conversations. And also, um, I will be proliferating it widely, so uh, check it out. If you're catching me on YouTube, please subscribe to my channel. It's Ask Victoria. Have a fantastically blessed day. Stay bright, stay courageous, and love yourself so that you can love others. Have a great one. Bye. Do you want to hit the finish button?